rain drummed loudly on the roof of the land cruiser. Tim felt the night vision goggles pressing heavily on his forehead. He reached for the knob near his ear and adjusted the intensity. There was a brief phosphorescent flare, and in the shades of electronic green and black, he could see the Land Cruiser behind, with Dr. Grant and Dr. Malcolm inside. Neat! Dr. Grant was staring out the front windshield towards him. Tim saw him pick up the radio from the dash. There was a burst of static, and then he heard Dr. Grant's voice. Can you see us back here? Tim picked up the radio from Ed Regis. I see you. Everything all right? We're fine, Dr. Grant. Stay in the car. We will. Don't worry. He clicked off the radio. Ed Regis snorted. It's pouring down with rain. Of course we're going to stay in the car, he muttered. Tim turned to look at the foliage at the side of the road. Through the goggles, the foliage was bright electronic green. And beyond, he could see sections of the green grid pattern of the fence. The Land Cruisers were stopped on the downslope of a hill, which must mean there was some place near the Tyrannosaur area. It would be amazing to see a Tyrannosaur with the night vision goggles. A real thrill. Maybe the Tyrannosaur would come to the fence and look over at them. Tim wondered if the eyes would glow in the dark when he saw them. That would be neat. But he didn't see anything and eventually he stopped looking. Everyone in the car felt silent. The rain thumbed on the roof of the car. Sheets of water streamed down over the sides of the windows. It was hard for Tim to see out, even with the goggles. How long have we been sitting here? Malcolm asked. I don't know, four or five minutes? I wonder what the problem is. Maybe a short circuit from the rain. But it happened before the rain really started. There was another silence. In a tense voice, Lex said, But there's no lightning, right? She had always been afraid of lightning, and she was now sat nervously squeezing her leather mitt in her hand. Dr. Grant said, What was that? We didn't quite read that. Just my sister talking. Oh. Tim again scanned the foliage, but saw nothing. Certainly nothing as big as a Tyrannosaur. He began to wonder if the Tyrannosaurus came out at night. Were they nocturnal animals? Tim wasn't sure if he had ever read that. He had the feeling that the Tyrannosaurs were all weather day or night animals. The time of day didn't matter to a Tyrannosaur. The rain continued to pour. Hell of a rain, it Regis said. It's really coming down. Lex said, I'm hungry. I know, Lex, Regis said. But we're stuck here, sweetie. The cars run on electricity and the buried cables in the road. Stuck for how long? until they fixed the electricity. Listening to the sound of the rain, Tim felt himself growing sleepy. He yawned and turned to look at the palm trees on the left side of the road and was startled by a sudden thump as the ground shook. He swung back just in time to catch a glimpse of a dark shape as it swiftly crossed the road between the two cars. Jesus, what was it? It was huge. It was big as the car. Tim, are you there? He picked up the radio. Yes, I'm here. Did you see it, Tim? No, Tim said. I missed it. What the hell was it, Malcolm said. Are you wearing the night vision goggles, Tim? Yes, I'll watch, Tim said. Was it the Tyrannosaur, Ed Regis asked. I don't think so. It was in the road. But you didn't see it, Ed Regis said. No. Tim felt bad he had missed seeing the animal, whatever it was. There was a sudden white crack of lightning, and his night goggles flared bright green. He blinked his eyes and started counting. One one thousand, two one thousand. The thunder crashed deafeningly loud and very close. Lex began to cry. Oh no! Take it easy, honey, Ed Regis said. It's just lightning. Tim scanned the side of the road. The rain was coming down hard now, shaking leaves with hammering drops. It made everything move. Everything seemed alive. He scanned the leaves. He stopped. There was something beyond the leaves. Tim looked up higher. Behind the foliage, beyond the fence, he saw a thick body with a pebbled, grainy surface like the bark of a tree. But it wasn't a tree. He continued to look higher, sweeping the goggles upwards. He saw a huge head of the Tyrannosaurus, just standing there, looking over the fence at the two Land Cruisers. 
The lightning flashed again, but the big animal rolled its head and bellowed in the glaring light. The darkness, the silence again, and the pounding rain. Tim. Yes, Dr. Grant. You see what it is? Yes, Dr. Grant. Tim had the sense that Dr. Grant was trying to talk in a way that wouldn't upset his sister. What's going on right now? Nothing, Tim said, watching the Tyrannosaur through the night vision goggles. Just standing on the other side of the fence. I can't see much from here, Tim. I can see fine, Dr. Grant. It's just standing there. Okay. Lex continued to cry, snuffling. There was another pause. Tim watched the Tyrannosaur. The head was huge. The animal looked from one vehicle to another, then back again. It seemed to stare right at Tim. In the goggles, the eyes glowed bright green. Tim felt a chill, but then, as he looked down the animal's body, moving down from the massive head and jaws, he saw the smaller muscular falling. It waved in the air, and then it gripped the fence. Jesus Christ, that Regis said, staring out the window. The greatest predator the world has ever known. The most fearsome attack in human history. Somewhere in the back of his publicist's brain, Egregious was still writing copy. But he could feel his knees begin to shake uncontrollably. His trousers were flapping like flags. Jesus, he was frightened. He didn't want to be here. Alone among all the people in the two cars, Egregious knew what a dinosaur attack looked like. He knew what happened to people. He had seen the mangled bodies that result from the raptor attack. He could picture it in his mind. And this was a Rex, much, much bigger. The greatest meat eater that ever walked the earth. Jesus, when the Tyrannosaur rod it was terrifying. A scream from some other world. And he just felt the spreading warmth in his trousers. He had peed in his pants. He was simultaneously embarrassed and terrified. But he knew he had to do something. He couldn't just stay here. He had to do something. Something. His hands were shaking, trembling against the dash. Jesus Christ, he said again. Bad language, Lex said, wagging her finger at him. Tim heard the sound of a door opening. He swung his head away from the Tyrannosaur. The night vision goggles streaked laterally, in time to see Edrija stepping out through the open door, ducking his head in the rain. Hey, Lex said, where are you going? Edregis just turned and ran in the opposite direction from the Tyrannosaur, disappearing into the woods. He left us. The door to the Land Cruiser hung open as the paneling was getting wet. He left, said Lex. Where did he go? He left us alone. Shut the door, Tim said, but she had started screaming again. He left us. He left us. Tim, what's going on? It was Grant on the radio. Tim. Tim leaned forward and tried to shut the door. From the back seat, he couldn't reach the handle. He looked back at the Tyrannosaur as lightning flashed again, momentarily silhouetting its huge black shape against the white flaring sky. Tim, what's happening? He left us, he left us. Tim blinked to recover his vision. When he looked again, the Tyrannosaur was standing there, exactly as before, motionless and huge. Rain dripped from its jaws. The falling gripped the fence. And then Tim realized Tyrannosaur was holding on to the fence. The fence wasn't electrified anymore. Lex, close the door. The radio crackled. Tim, I'm here, Dr. Grant. What's going on? We just ran away, Tim said. He what? He ran away. I think he saw that the fence isn't electrified, Tim said. The fence isn't electrified, Malcolm said over the radio. Did he say the fence isn't electrified? Lex, Tim said, close the door. But Lex was screaming, he left us, he left us, in a steady, monotonous wail. And there was nothing for Tim to do but climb out of the back door into the slashing rain and shut the door for her. Thunder rumbled, and the lightning flashed again. Tim looked up and saw the Tyrannosaur crashing down the cyclone fence with its great hind limb. Timmy! He jumped back in and slammed the door. The sound was lost in the thunderclap. The radio. Tim, are you there? He grabbed the radio. I'm here. He turned to Lex. Lock the doors. Get in the middle of the car and shut up. Outside, the Tyrannosaur rolled its head and took an awkward step forward. The claws of his feet had caught in the grid of the flattened fence. Lex saw the animal finally. 
and became silent. Still, she watched with wide eyes. Radio cackle. Tim. Yes, Dr. Grant. Stay in the car. Stay down. Be quiet. Don't move. Don't make noise. Okay, you should be all right. I don't think I can open the car. Okay, just stay quiet so you don't arouse its attention any more than necessary. Okay, Tim clicked off the radio. You hear that, Lex? His sister nodded silently. She never took her eyes off the dinosaur. The Tyrannosaur roared. And the glare of lightning that saw it pull free of the fence and take a bounding step forward. Now it was standing between the two cars. Tim didn't see Dr. Grant's car anymore because the huge body blocked his view. The rain ran in rivulets down the pebbled skin of the muscular hind leg. He could see the animal's head, which was high above the roof line. The Tyrannosaur moved around the side of their car. It went to the very spot where Tim had gotten out of the car, where Adridas has gotten out of the car. The animal paused there. The big head dug down towards the mud. Tim looked back at Dr. Grant and Dr. Malcolm in the car. Their faces were tense as they stared forward through the windshield. The huge head raised back up, jaws open, and then stopped by the side windows. In the glare of lightning, they saw the beady, expressionless reptile eye moving in the socket. It was looking in the car. His sister's breath came in ragged fright and gasps. He reached out and squeezed her arm, hoping she would stay quiet. The dinosaur continued to stare for a long time through the side window. Perhaps the dinosaur couldn't really see them, he thought. Finally, the head lifted up and out of view again. Timmy, Lex whispered. It's okay, Tim whispered. I don't think it's Saws. He was looking back towards Dr. Grant when a jolting impact rocked the Land Cruiser and shattered the windshield in a spider web as the Tyrannosaurus head crashed against the hood of the Land Cruiser. Tim was knocked flat to the seat. The night vision goggles slid off his forehead. He got back up quickly, blinking in the darkness, his mouth warm with blood. Lex! He couldn't see his sister anywhere. The Tyrannosaurus stood near the front of the Land Cruiser, its chest moving as it breathed the forelimbs making clawing movements in the air. Lex, Tim whispered, then he heard her groan. She was lying somewhere on the floor underneath the front seat. Then the huge head came down, entirely blocking the shattered windshield. The Tyrannosaur banged again on the front hood of the Land Cruiser. Tim grabbed the seat as the car rocked on its wheels. The Tyrannosaur banged down twice more, denting the metal. Then it moved around the side of the car. The big raised tail blocked his view out of all the side windows. At the back, the animal snorted, a deep rumbling growl that blended with the thunder. It sank its jaws into the spare tire mounted on the back of the Land Cruiser, and in a single shake, tore it away. The rear of the car lifted into the air for a moment, then it thumped down with a muddy splash. Tim, Dr. Grant said, Tim, are you there? Tim grabbed the radio. We're okay, he said. There was a shrill metallic scrape as claws raked the roof of the car. Tim's heart was pounding in his chest. He couldn't see anything out of the windows on the right side except pebbled, leathery flesh. The Tyrannosaur was leaning against the car, which rocked back and forth with each breath. The springs and metal creaked loudly. Lex groaned again. Tim put down the radio and started to crawl over to the front seat. Tyrannosaur roared, and the metal roof dented downward. Tim felt a sharp pain in his head and tumbled to the floor into the transmission home. He found himself lying alongside Lex, and he was shocked to see that the whole side of her head was covered in blood. She looked unconscious. There was another jolting impact, and pieces of glass fell all around him. Tim felt rain. He looked up and saw that the front windshield had broken out. There was a jagged rim of glass, and beyond the big head of the dinosaur looking down at him Tim felt a sudden chill and then the head rushed forward towards him the jaws opened there was a squeal of metal against teeth and he felt the hot stinking breath of the animal and the thick tongue stuck into the car through the windshield opening the tongue slapped wetly around inside the car he felt the hot lather of the dinosaur saliva and the tyrannosaur roar deafening sound inside the car. The head pulled away abruptly. Tim scrambled up, avoiding the dent in the roof. 
there was still room to sit in the front seat by the passenger door. The Tyrannosaur stood in the rain near the front fender. It seemed confused by what had happened to it. Blood dripped freely from its jaws. The Tyrannosaur looked at Tim, cocking its head to stare with one big eye. The head moved close to the car, sideways, and peered in. Blood splattered on the dented hood of the Land Cruiser, mixing with the rain. It can't get to me, Tim thought. It's too big. And then the head pulled away, and in the flare of the lightning, he saw the hind leg lift up. And the world tilted crazily as the Land Cruiser slammed over on its side, the windows splitting with mud. He saw Lex fall helplessly against the side window. He fell down beside her, banging his head. Tim felt dizzy. Then the Tyrannosaurus's jaws clamped onto the window frame, and the whole Land Cruiser was lifted up into the air and shaken. Timmy! Lex shrieked, so near to his ear that it hurt. She was suddenly awake, and he grabbed her as the Tyrannosaur crashed the car down again. Tim felt a stabbing pain in his side, and his sister fell on top of him. The car went up again, tilting crazily. Lex shouted, Timmy! And he saw the dog give way beneath her. She fell out of the car and into the mud, but Timmy couldn't answer, because in the next instance everything swung crazily. He saw the trunks of the palm trees sliding down past him, moving sideways through the air. He glimpsed the ground very far below, and the hot roar from the Tyrannosaur, the blazing eye, the tops of the palm trees, and then... With a metallic scraping shriek, the car fell from the Tyrannosaurus jaws, a sickening fall, and Tim's stomach heaved in the moment before the world came totally black and silent. In the other car, Malcolm gasped, Jesus, what happened to the car? Graham blinked, his eyes as the lightning faded. The other car was gone. Grant couldn't believe it. He peered forward, trying to see through the rain-streaked windshield. The dinosaur's body was so large, it was probably just blocking. No. In another flash of lightning, he saw clearly the car was gone. What happened, Malcolm said. I don't know. Faintly, over the rain, Grant heard the sound of the little girl screaming. The dinosaur was standing in the darkness on the road up ahead, but they could see well enough to know that it was bending over now, sniffing the ground. Or eating something on the ground. Can you see? Malcolm said, squinting. Not much, no, Grant said. The rain pounded on the roof of the car. He listened for the little girl, but he didn't hear anything anymore. The two men sat in the car, listening. Was it the girl? Malcolm said finally. It sounded like the girl. It did, yes. Was it? I don't know, said Grant. He felt a seeping fatigue overtake him. Blurred through the rainy windshield, the dinosaur was coming towards their car. Slow. Ominous strides right towards them, Malcolm said. You know, at times like this I feel, well, perhaps extinct animals should be left extinct. Don't you have that feeling right now? Yes, Grant said. He was feeling his heart pounding. Um, do you have any suggestions about what we do now? I can't think of anything, said Grant. Malcolm twisted the handle, kicked open the door, and ran. But even as he did, Grant could see it was too late. Tyrannosaur was too close. There was another crack of lightning, and in that instance of glaring white light, Grant watched in horror as the Tyrannosaur roared and leapt forward. Grant was not clear about exactly what happened next. Malcolm was running. His feet were splashing in the mud. The Tyrannosaur bounded alongside him and ducked its massive head, and Malcolm was tossed into the air like a small doll. By then, Grant was out of the car too. Feeling the cold rain slashing his face and body, the Tyrannosaur had turned its back to him, the huge tail swinging through the air. Grant was tensing to run for the woods, then suddenly the Tyrannosaur spun back to face him. And he froze. He was standing beside the passenger door of the Land Cruiser, drenched in rain. He was completely exposed. The Tyrannosaur was no more than eight feet away. The big animal roared again. So close range, the sound was terrifyingly loud. Grant felt himself shaking with cold and fright. He pressed his trembling hands against the metal of the door panels to steady them. The Tyrannosaur roared once more, but it did not attack. He cocked his head and looked with first one eye, then the other at the Land Cruiser, and did nothing. It just stood there. What 
what was going on. The powerful jaws opened and closed. The Tyrannosaur bellowed angrily. And then the big hind leg came up and crashed down on the roof of the car. The claw slid off with a metal screech, barely missing Grant as he stood there, still unmoving. The foot splashed in the mud. The head took down in a slow arc, and the animal inspected the car, snorting. It peered into the front windshield, then, moving towards the rear, it banged the passenger door shut and moved right towards Grant as he stood there. Grant was dizzy with fear, his heart pounding inside his chest. With the animal so close, he could smell the rotten flesh in the mouth, the Swedish blood smell, and the sickening stench of the carnivore. He tensed his body, awaiting the inevitable. The big head slid past him, towards the rear of the car. Grant blinked. What had happened? Was it possible the Tyrannosaur had not seen him? It seemed as if it hadn't. But how could that be? Grant looked back to see the animal sniffing the rear-mounted tire. It nudged the tire with its snout, and then the head swung back. Again, it approached Grant. This time the animal stopped. The black flaring nostrils just inches away. Grant felt the animal's startling hot breath on his face. But the Tyrannosaur wasn't sniffing like a dog. It was just breathing, and if anything, it seemed puzzled. No, the Tyrannosaur couldn't see him, not if he stood motionless. And in a detached academic corner of his mind, he found an explanation for that, the reason why. The jaws opened before him, the massive head raised up. Grant squeezed his fists together and bit his lip, trying desperately to remain motionless, to make no sound. The Tyrannosaur bellowed in the night air. But by now, Grant was beginning to understand. The animal couldn't see him. It suspected he was there, somewhere, and was trying with its bellowing to frighten Grant into some revealing movement. So as long as he stood his ground, Grant realized he was invisible. In a final gesture of frustration, the big hind leg lifted and kicked the Land Cruiser over, and Grant felt searing pain and the surprising sensation of his own body flying through the air. It seemed to be happening very slowly, and he had plenty of time to feel the world turn colder and watch the ground as it rushed up to strike him in the face.